Hey guys, what's going on? I'm doing a how to do TTM video. Um, since a lot of the people I know that do TTMs have done one, so I figured I should do one. Um, this is for people, you know, that are just starting out doing TTMs that may need some help. Um, you should watch this video, I guess. Uh, so if you're in the TTMs, you know what you're doing this stuff, you probably don't even have to watch this video. Probably just... Uh, not waste your time with it because I'm sure it'll be very boring. People like Xizor guy, people people like that. Um, so this is my version of how to do TTMs. There may be more out there. I don't know how many more there are, but um, so the first thing is before you write down any of the addresses or whatever, you always want to find a reliable source to get your addresses from um, because there is websites that will mess you up and stuff. Uh, you want one that's always um, uh, ref gone over a lot. Someone that is always on the website. You want good feedback on an address because there's some addresses that you'll send to it and it'll come back, you know, return a sender or not the correct person and you don't want to waste your postage and time on that. So you want to have one that has really good positive feedback um, and there is multiple addresses because players do move like normal people. Um, they do have multiple houses. So if you find one, I would just pick the one with the best feedback, the most positive feedback, not one that has a bunch of failures and stuff, and one positive. I wouldn't pick that one. Um, so you, you want a website that's reliable, you can rely on and stuff. Um, and then now that you... And I'll actually some of the addresses that I, I mean some addresses, some of the websites that I think are pretty good and I've got some really good TTM successes from I'll put on the um, description box. And then also what I'm doing for my photo bucket is I'm putting, since I don't know if you guys seen that long list next to my description, um... I, I'm, I gotta stop that because I can't go on that forever so all my TTM successes so I'm gonna try to put pictures it may take a while but I'm gonna try to get all my TTM su successes on my photo bucket which is located in my description box all the way bottom all the way to the bottom of the description which says um, websites on it on my home page and click on that and see some of my um, TTM successes so and then after you got your addresses you write down, I always put a return to return address right on the left hand corner of the envelope because if you're sending a pretty good a car that's worth a lot of money or something that's valuable valuable to you, I would um, definitely put a uh, thing there so if it wrong address or he doesn't want to sign it or something, always put that there so it can get sent back to you. Um, and then the cards. Um, most of the cards from 19, early 1990s down to 40s and 50s are more cardboard than they are glossy. I, didn't, I don't think there's much glossy cards from the 50s and 60s and stuff. So here's some good examples if you're going for cards, not from 50s, 60s. If you're going to try to find cards or players um, from nowadays. Um, here's 2008 Gaudi is pretty good. Um, to get signed, it, uh, you don't have to treat it or anything because I heard some, if you have glossy, like uh, 2009 tops, 2008 tops, 2007 tops, the glossy kind, I heard you have to put um, baby powder on or something like that. You have to look it up, look that up on the internet because um, the autographs won't stick. They'll like get all messed up and, and they won't look right and they'll probably bring down um, the, the um, if you try to get it. Oh, I don't think it, it would just look really bad, you know. And 2009 Turkey Red, Turkey Red's pretty good. They look, the cards are look uh, pretty good looking cards, and they nice to get signed. This is 2009 Jacoby Ellsbury. This is an example from like the 60s, 70s, 50s. This is a 1975, um, pretty weird looking guy. But these cards you don't have to treat or anything, just like the other ones back there. Um, you can just get them signed. But this is an example, which I already showed you, the 2009 tops, which you'd have to, like, treat or whatever before you send it out. And 2008, well, Tops Heritage is a very good...
thing to get signed because they they're like make this um, cards old school and so they're all like cardboard base and they are good to get signed and let's see cards oh and here's an example of an older one you can get anything signed from them um, from the older thing and then when you write a letter to the person I usually just use um, printer paper you want to write it you want to hand write it because it shows the players that you you know put some time into it you're not just printing them off the computer or printing them from a website or something like that um, you put some time into it I, I usually don't try to suck up too much to the players because it kinda you know kinda look really bad and stuff you know just you just wanna suck up to them to just get their autograph um, I wouldn't do that I usually just say you know like uh, if anything uh, congratulations to the Hall of Fame or congratulations on last season stuff like that and I and you don't want to really suck up to them um, and then you always want to make sure before you even look up the player's address I usually go on to Google put in their name if you're doing an older player um, like uh, uh, Juan Pizarro I, I typed his name on Google and I, Wikipedia, I think it's the only good thing, one of the only things Wikipedia is good for is to find if people are dead or alive. They're usually pretty good with that. I haven't had one um, bad thing to say about them for that. Um, usually, um, they have good things. So if you type in their name, a lot of baseball players have a Wikipedia page. And it'll say, like, if they died, what date, where they died. And if they're still alive, it'll tell you how old they are and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you want to make sure they're not dead. And then you also want to make sure that um, when if they do sign, um, if they charge. Like Don Larson charges $10. Vern Law charges $8. You want to know that because you don't want to send a card to them and have them not sign it. Um, you know, or just not even send it back to you. Um, some players usually just give you like a freebie, but the reason players are charging now is for donations, but also they don't like to see their cards just go on eBay, signed, they don't, like Vern Law told me. He doesn't like that. So they, they try to veer people away from getting cheap cards to sell on eBay. So anyways, make sure they ch if they do charge, how much, because you don't want to just waste posters on that. And so that's about it. Um, always include a self-addressed envelope and tell them kind of what it's for. Usually um, they know what it's for, but just to be on the safe side, tell them what it's for. Put a self-addressed envelope. I usually don't put mine on the left. I don't put anything because sometimes they'll put their address there or they'll put yours. So it automatically goes to your address, if anything. And always put a postage stamp on it because they usually won't do it for you. Um... So there you go. That's my TTM how to do. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always email me on my YouTube account. Like I said, if you want any addresses, I'll try my best to get the addresses to you, but I can't guarantee anything if I get like hundreds of requests for addresses. But like I said, um, don't get gypped out on the internet with the addresses. Be careful. Um, I wish you most success on your addresses and on um, your successes and I will see you guys later. I hope I didn't bore you too much.